All right. Well, sometimes you can't really find the, the correct environment to, to shoot. Sometimes going home is hard. Uh, and uh, sometimes I just gotta kind of do what I gotta do. So I'm in my future Bobby Cafe shop. And uh, today we're gonna talk about a little bit of a, a gritty topic, but also a really necessary topic, which is how to survive in Thailand. And first I'm gonna say that I've been here about two and a half years. And a lot of the things I'm gonna share with you are things I've learned from being here. Um, but a lot of them are things I've learned from observing other people. Um, I will tell you that this is a wonderful place to come. Uh, people can be very friendly. Uh, uh, there's a lot of opportunity here. It's a lot of fun. Um, one time I, I heard somebody in a, a YouTube video talk about how uh, South America is kind of like uh, the American dream in Mad Max and how uh, <clears throat> if you're willing to put up with the danger and kind of the chaos, there's a lot of opportunity. And I really feel that way about Thailand also. So what I wanna do though, is I wanna share with you some of the things to help you through those Mad Max parts, some of those things to help you survive. Um, because when it comes down to it, uh, this isn't a third world country because it's never, it doesn't fit the definition because it's never been uh, uh, colonized by any other country. You know, so Cambodia is a third world country because it was colonized by the French. Uh, Lao, same situation. Uh, but basically, uh, it is a developing country though. And because of that, some people can be desperate. So here are my, my tips for you. Um, the number one tip I have for you is if you're in a situation where you know, maybe some bad people are hanging around you. Let's say, let's just say, because a lot of people watching this video will go to Patea. It's a big kind of sin city here. Uh, you may have a problem. You may have somebody that's targeted you for whatever reason. Uh, uh, maybe like a foreigner that doesn't like you because they're jealous of you. Maybe you're more successful than them. Maybe the girl they like is talking to you. Who knows? Uh, there might be another situation where uh, you just don't feel comfortable, the, those hairs in the back of your neck are standing up. So the first advice I have to give you is if you're in a bad situation, make space. Okay, so if you're in a bar, for example, uh, get out of the bar, you know, pay your bill and get out. You know, even say you're coming back, you know, if that's, if that's gonna help you in the situation, like, oh, I'm not feeling good, yeah, my stomach's hurting, you know, must have eaten too much spicy food, right? and go make some space you know if you're still in a situation where uh even at your hotel or condo or wherever you are if you're still in a situation where you feel unsafe uh, the next thing i would recommend is making more space you can make as much space as you want in thailand you know and it's cheap to do it's not going to kill you it's not a big deal but if you're feeling in danger and you've got the wrong people that are around you that are trying to be around you the last thing you want to do is go to your eight-story condo okay uh the thailand flying club it's a real thing it's a it's a real thing um since i've been here you hear stories all the time uh, you see areas in front of condos that are cordoned off a lot with police activity. Um, it's just too easy of a thing to, to join that club, okay? So if you feel like you're in danger and you feel like people uh, could be a problem for you, number one thing, let's get out, okay? So, so make space from the situation. So how do you make space? First step, I'll just break it down real simple because when you're scared, uh, you tend to panic and your brain doesn't work very well and that's why we're, we're making this video now that's why we're going through these steps and making a plan now so that you can just automatically muscle memory what you need to do okay so first thing you need to do is if you're in a city like uh, Patea or Bangkok or Phuket or something like that first thing to do open the app on your phone get a grab taxi a grab taxi is gonna have the lowest incidence of bull crap. It's basically the Uber of the East. Uh, Uber and Grab made an agreement. Grab, you know, Uber will stay out of Asia. Uh, grab will stay out of Europe and America, okay? So, so it's, it's the same software, same deal. 
uh, you're gonna pay more initially to pay a lot less later. Okay, so what I'm saying is they charge a few extra cents or maybe a dollar or something like that to, to use the service. But on the other hand, you're not gonna get screwed over uh, for a lot more money than that by the driver. You're not going to have to explain where to go. It's just very simple. And what you need to type in is bus station, okay? And if you can't, uh, if you can't get grabbed for whatever reason and you gotta go faster than that, uh, go get a tuk-tuk, right? Go get a Sam Low, the three-wheel vehicles, the little motorcycles. Uh, take whatever transportation you can. If you need to pay a little bit more to do it, to get out of the situation, just pay. This is not the time to worry about a few dollars. Pay, get to the bus station. Okay, when you're at the bus station, uh, let's just say you're in Patea. Okay. Uh, when you're at the bus station, they have a bus that leaves every 30 minutes to somewhere. Okay, So where are you going to go? That's probably the hardest question. Do you want to go to Bangkok from, from, uh, from Patea? Pro I mean, you could. It's better than where you're at, but, but maybe not. Because basically, Bank uh, Patea is almost a suburb, really, of Bangkok, right? So if you're trying to, if you're worried enough to, to get out, get out a little bit more far. Uh, above Bangkok is Korat, okay? That's, that's kind of like a central Thai area. It'll take you, depending on traffic and the time of day, let's just say this is at nighttime. It's, at nighttime, it's probably an hour and a half uh, north. That's gonna get you away from anybody that knows you. It's gonna get you around a safe, you know, into a relatively safe city with a lot of amenities. It's, it's not a big city like Bangkok. Uh, but it is, you know, in between Bangkok and, uh, uh, you know, like a smaller northern town, okay? So, uh, first thing to do is just have a destination in mind. I actually found myself in a situation like this, uh, not because I was scared or uh, because there was something wrong, but because I found myself quickly burning through money. I was burning through money really fast in Bangkok. Uh, on my first trip, <laughs> You know, uh, everybody would uh, offer me a ride, you know, everywhere I'd walk. Um, it would be an expensive ride and, and everything just added up, mostly transportation. It added up. And then sometimes I would have tuk-tuks that want to take me to a hotel, like, oh, this is my friend. This is the greatest place. You're going to love it. It's so cheap. It's so great. And I get there and it's terrible and really expensive, you know. So, so I quickly learned, you know, number one, make space. Okay, get away from the problem. Uh, go to booking.com, go to agoda.com, uh, you know, go to Expedia. Uh, I mostly use booking.com myself. Get a hotel, get a resort, whatever, you know, whatever's cheap and handy. It's probably gonna be $15, right? Get a place where you can basically sit down, you know, take a nap, relax, wake up, and kind of plan your next move, okay? So what happened? You know, when you're fresh and a little bit more rested, maybe you'll decide, you know, it's not that big of a deal. Or maybe you'll decide, you know, I, I feel like I'm just not comfortable in that area anymore. I'm gonna find another place to go. And in my case, in Bangkok, I was burning through money so fast, I actually did like a Google search on my phone. Uh, I went to a bus station. I decided, you know, I'm not gonna make it here much longer financially. I'd already burned through, in the first week, I'd burned through half the money for my two month trip. And I'm like, I gotta get out of here. Uh, so I did a search for uh, a Thailand city that like white guy the most. I know that's stupid, but that's what I typed in. And the first thing I came across was Udon Thani. And I went up north, it was like a, maybe a nine, 10 hour bus ride. And uh, I stayed at a resort that was uh, maybe, I think I paid maybe 1200 for the first uh, month. You know, 1,200 baht, so not expensive, like $36 for a month. So that basically got me out of my problem. I had a really good experience, but, but, but just for safety, if you're ever unsure of the situation, remove yourself, okay? So that's my, my number one tip. Um, you know, Thailand, in many respects, and I'm sorry about the, the noise outside, if you're in Thailand, you'll get used to the motorcycles. But uh, Thailand is a lot like the Wild West. I swear. Uh, it's a lot like the Wild West where it used to be that if you had a problem in, uh, I don't know, uh, 
El Dorado City or I just made that up. If you had a problem there, you could basically go to another city not even that far away and nobody knows you. Uh, you don't have a reputation. You don't, you're just a complete stranger. And unless you tell someone your story, they're not gonna know, all right? So Thailand is a place that you can move and start over, okay? So if you screwed up somewhere, get out. There's a ton of cities here. There's a ton of places. There's a ton of villages. There's a ton of cute people. All right, so number one, make space. Um, you know, and I don't care if you have a week left on your rental. I don't care if you're really gonna miss that girl or you're really, just whatever, just get out, okay? Uh, if there's some girl that's really great, you can just bring her to you. It's, it's really cheap, like a $15 bus ticket. Um, you know, I, I just I actually wrote down a quote from Jimmy Buffett, you know. Most people say there's a woman to blame, but I know it's my own damn fault, right? Okay, so that, that's probably something to keep in mind is keep accountable, keep, uh, realize that most of the problems you have are caused by you. So ask yourself, what can I learn from it? What can I do differently? Don't go from city to city doing the same stupid things that you did to get you in trouble the first time, you know? I feel like, uh, not to get political, but you know, Californians, they come to Texas a lot where I'm from and they basically leave the high taxes, they leave all this stuff and what do they do? They come in and vote for high taxes and the same stuff that screwed up where they came from, right? Don't be that guy, you know? All right, so, uh, second tip is Thailand is the land of smiles. When you smile first, okay? You can't, uh, no one's actually, yeah, people may smile at you, but generally speaking, no one's really gonna smile at you unless you smile first. Just remember, you're probably physically a lot larger than most people here. Uh, you know, to, to, to certain people, they look at you and you may look intimidating, but you smile, you know, and it just diffuses everything. It's, even when the situation's terrible, Okay, so someone has just rear-ended your truck, okay? Uh, oh, you know, and here's how I handle it. What do I want to do? Oh my gosh, I want to blow up. You know, you bleep, bleep, bleep. You just crashed into my truck, you donkey, you idiot, right? That, that, that's, you know, I want to go Gordon Ramsay style, right? But, but you, can't, you can't do that here, okay? Uh, what I recommend doing a smile now if they come out at you in a rage or something like that um, you know still try to maintain your cool basically smile oh we had an accident okay well let's take some pictures and keep smiling you know it's okay don't worry you know uh, oh and by the way carry insurance here it's like a thousand a year um, you know, insurance is great here too. They don't jack you up if you have a problem. Uh, last year I actually backed into a pole uh, and then like two nights later someone backed into the front of my car and, and ruined like the front bumper. I went into Mitsubishi where my car's with, had it all fixed in one day, not a big deal, easiest, oh my gosh, in America, I don't know what we're doing really. But anyway, so smile. Okay. The police just pulled you over because you're not wearing a helmet. Oh, yeah. How are you? Oh, you know, yeah, you're so handsome. Maybe they don't even understand you, but they hear, uh, 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 uh. they hear happy tones, right? Keep the tones happy. Don't, don't bring it down here because everybody can go down here, including them, right? And I've seen it. You know, Thai cops, they don't look that big. You know, they don't look uh, intimidating, but what I've seen happen is, especially when people run away from them on the motorcycle, they'll get, they'll get two or three of them, they'll pin that person in, and they'll be pretty rough, okay? Best thing, just smile. They don't want a problem with you. You're a foreigner, it's a big pain in the neck, right? There's tourist police, there's all kinds of stuff. Just, you know, oh, you got me. Pay the 200 baht, $6 fine for not wearing a helmet. Promise to do better next time and move on, okay? So, so Thailand is the land of smiles when you smile first. Also, if you happen to be in a situation where someone's searching your backpack, you know, Thailand is an interesting place. Uh, we come from, a lot of us come from places that have, you know, freedoms that we take for granted, like uh, 
probable cause. You know, someone has to have probable cause to search you. Well here, probable cause could be you look a little bit too skinny. You know, you have a little bit too many tattoos. Maybe you have some on your neck, you know, maybe uh, you just look unhealthy a little bit. Like maybe someone that does drugs. So what can they do? They can take some of your hair, right? Or they can, on the side of the road, ask you to basically pee in a cup. They're gonna test you, and if you're doing drugs, they're gonna get, they're gonna catch you, okay? So, so Thailand is a place, do not do drugs, okay? Oh, and what I was getting to is, if they search you, okay, if they search your backpack, if they unzip your backpack, in America, to be honest, police are really scary now, you know, like, uh, I've had, you know, I don't want to get on the video, but I feel like I look like a kind of a normal guy and I've had some really scary stuff happen, you know. Uh, one, I would say Thai police are a lot less scary than American police generally, uh, but you, you can't entirely trust anyone here, uh, including the police. So if they start to search your backpack, just stay right around them. Hey, oh wow, did you find anything? Oh, okay, maybe they don't understand you. Keep the tones happy. Oh, okay, that's cool. Can I film? Oh, yeah, YouTube, you know, I'm making a YouTube video. Yeah, the police here, very handsome, you know. Whatever condescending stupid stuff you have to say, just say it, okay? Keep the tone nice, keep them buttered up. Film it, because the last thing you want is a little dime bag snuck into your bag, right? You don't know if they're gonna take something, um, you don't know if they're gonna plant something. Okay, so be there. It's a deterrent. It makes them think twice or three times or makes it impossible for them to do something. Because if they sneak a little dime bag of something, they're probably gonna be a little more lenient on you knowing that they planted it there, but they're gonna get some serious cash from you or your family. And if you don't pay, you're gonna be sent to Bangkok, the Bangkok Hilton Jail, okay? And this is why I say avoid drugs. Drugs is the one thing that Thai police are really rewarded for. They get a lot of accolades for. So it's the one thing you really can't talk your way out of, okay? So uh, do everything here. You can do stuff here that you can't even dream about in other countries. I recommend not doing it, but you could, okay? But drugs, don't do drugs. And don't be around people doing drugs. That's the other thing. Don't even be around someone that, that does drugs or did them a week ago, okay? Don't be around them. You don't want to be associated with it and you don't want the problems, okay? So, so don't do drugs. All right. Um, a lot of foreigners, they, you, you'll see them say like, uh, oh, in my country this, in my country that. Um, especially the police or government authority figures. I'll just tell you that it makes your life a lot harder. Okay, so um, it, everyone knows that America or Switzerland or whatever is going to be much more achieved. They call it more achieved than their country. And they will also tell you, and if it's so great, why are you here, right? I mean, let's just be honest. If someone in our country talks about how much it sucks and how great it is where they're from, what do we want to say that we politically can't say anymore? Go back to where you came from, right? Well, here it's not politically incorrect. So, so just avoid it. Flip the, the script a little bit. Instead of doing that, uh, <clears throat> when you come to a government appointment, like immigration, bring something. You know, bring a snack. Bring, uh, you know, for, for myself, we bring sausages because our area, our area in Chupay is known for sausages. So we drive an hour, we go get sausages. And then we bring them, we arrive at the immigration appointment around lunchtime, and they cook them up, they love us. And I'm telling you, my immigration process is gone smooth as butter compared to some people, okay? So just remember that. Um, <clears throat> I wanna talk a little bit about money here. Uh, money can fix anything in Thailand. Uh, money really can fix everything in America or, or Europe also, right? But here it's a little bit more uh, accepted. So there's two different kinds of law. There's what Europeans and Americans are used to, which is uh, the rule of law, which basically states if you're the, the king or president down to the lowest person, the law applies to everyone equally. 
right? And the law is what dictates things and, and that's the way it is, right? So we can depend that if we do certain things wrong, we're gonna get a certain consequence within certain legal stipulations. So if I am caught with drugs, I know that in the state of Texas, uh, I have a mandatory three to five years I'd have to do in a federal prison or so. You know, I don't know, but, but stuff like that. All right, now let's flip the script and talk about how Asia is different. Asia is not a rule of law country. Uh, they may want to act like it is, but it's not. This is what we call a law of man country, okay? Uh, or a law of, of, uh, law of man culture, okay? Thailand is a law of man country. So basically, what that means is you have to get the approval of the person that's basically over you in authority at that moment. So that can basically involve a lot of things, but I'll, I'll give you an example. Uh, my workers, uh, one of my workers bought an iPhone, uh, I don't know which one, but they bought an iPhone from somebody that, that's a little, like a couple cities away. Well, the person took their money and never delivered the phone. And through some, you know, uh, Facebook posts or whatever, they figured out where this person was. And so what they did is they called the police to basically go with them. And they dealt with it by beating the tar out of the person that sold them the phone. And the police basically sat there. And when the police figured that that person had had enough for what they'd done, then the police stopped it. My workers paid the police who then got their money back, okay? Things work differently here, all right? This is not the same as, as America. Now, that may sound scary to you, and, and, and it is scary. If you're a person stupid enough to, to scam people selling iPhones you don't really have, it's dangerous. You can get your butt kicked. But I mean, isn't that what we'd kind of expect? Like if we're a kid, you know, thinking about how the world's gonna work, isn't that kind of what we would guess? You know, that's how it works here. But what's scarier, that or uh, maybe you're, I don't know, maybe you're uh, 19 years old and it's Thanksgiving and you have like a cousin that, that's acting up and you guys get in a fight on the front lawn and the, the police have to come and uh, you know, you go to jail and it's like a felony assault charge and you know, basically you, you sit in jail, you know, for a couple days, but you've got a felony record that now prevents you from having a career or a life for the rest of your life. Now you have to do work for mom and pa places, work for your own company, but it's a decision, one thing when you're almost a kid that affects your entire life. What's scarier, that? Or basically having to pay the police a little bit of money to do their job? I'll pick the police, paying them a little money to do their job anytime, really, you know. Um, Thailand is like America was 60 years ago. The police are generally kind of like that hometown sheriff here where they want to make sure the kid gets up home okay. They, they want to make sure everything's normal in their town. Uh, they want to keep the status quo. They don't want to shoot anybody. They don't want to have a big problem. They don't even want to cart someone off to jail. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Know how it works. Understand law of man versus rule of law. Okay, don't try to be a lawyer here. They don't care. It doesn't matter. Okay, even in America, they don't care, right? I mean, they'll still tase you, you know, just sit there and tase you till you die, right? So don't argue, smile, right? Go along with it. If you have to pay a fine for no helmet or for not having a license or whatever, you know, Six, ten bucks, it's over, okay? So that, that's my advice. Pay the money, smile, be nice. When you see the police again, wave, all right? All right, so, uh, oh, also regarding money, uh, keep some hidden in your wallet. Keep some hidden in places where no one knows. Not a ton, but keep like maybe 50, $50 on you. 30 bucks will get you out of most jams here. You know, if you really screw up, let's just say, you know, uh, you do have a real problem, like you, you did something really stupid, like I, I can't even imagine, like maybe you got in a shoving match with somebody in a bar, who knows. Uh, 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 30 bucks will get you out of that situation with the police. You know, you apologize to the person, like, hey, can I pay the fine now? Is that okay? You know, because I just feel so bad. 
you know, or, or, or maybe give the guy 500 baht that you shoved and then the police 500, is that, is this, everything okay now? I, I feel so bad, right? Just, just handle things, be calm. If you're with a Thai person that, that can help you, let them negotiate for you. But best thing, don't do something stupid, all right? And, and actually this, this brings me to my next point about Thai rage. Thai rage is real. Okay, Thai rage is basically, in Asia everybody has face, so everyone wants to basically keep their pride. Face is another word for pride, okay? So everyone has face, but when you degrade someone to the point or, or argue with them to the point where they lose that, right, you're going to experience something that, that people react, the way people react when they lose all that, which is Thai rage. Thai rage basically means somebody goes flies off the handle completely and they'll start hitting you, they'll start going crazy, maybe they'll start pulling out their hair, who knows, okay? But it's a real thing and it's scary. And uh, if someone has a machete in their tuk-tuk, let's say you have a tuk-tuk driver that's a jerk, it's gonna happen all the time because they're mostly jerks, okay? Uh, you don't know if there's a machete in there. You don't know what's going on. So even if you get a little bit ripped off on your, your, your you know, uh, your fare. Uh, if somebody says something to you that's not cool or you don't agree with, like everyone likes to talk bad about President Trump to me all the time, and it's like, oh, you know, but, but, oh, really? Huh, interesting. You know, I appreciate your opinion. Yeah, that's great. What do you think? Who, me? I don't know, you know? So, uh, you know, I just keep to myself, you know. We used to say that uh, the voting booths have a curtain for a reason, right? So, uh, all right. So now I'm gonna talk a little bit about some of the ways to, and I have to adjust myself on the floor here, some of the ways to avoid uh, some of the, the rip-offs or scams, all right? So the first thing I'll, I'll, I'll tell you that should basically get your, your, your cockles up or, you know, I'm always someone that thinks about Star Trek, so the things that put me on yellow alert is firstly, if someone says, hello, my friend, hello, you know, and, and I'm just imagining, you know, the first time I came to Thailand, I thought, you know, people are just so nice here, you know, that's, it's amazing, you know, but no, anyone that says, hello, my friend, is not your friend, for sure. Okay, what they're gonna do is they're, let's say you're getting off a bus, hello my friend, I, you know, it's like, wow, I didn't know I had somebody, you know, some long lost relative meeting me in the middle of, of Bangkok at 2 a.m., this is so great, you know? Um, they're not your friend. What they're gonna do, as soon as you get off the bus, they're gonna grab your luggage, they're gonna carry it for you, and you're like, man, it's just so nice because I'm a white guy. You know, look at all this privilege I get, you know. I'm a black American. Look at all this. This is so great. Wow, in America, this is never like this, right? They'll, they'll walk up, put your stuff in the back of their taxi, and they'll take you to wherever you're going to go. It's super convenient, but it's also super expensive, okay? Now that $10 ride has cost you $30 or $40, okay? Uh, so, so be aware of that. Be aware, if you take a tuk-tuk, a general rule of thumb is in Bangkok or in a big city, a 10 minute ride should cost about, you know, 10 to 15 minutes should cost about 200 baht, okay, which is about six US dollars in euros, I don't know, close to that, right? So basically, uh, if you're just going a few blocks away and they're telling you it's gonna be, you know, $12 or $15, um, you know you're gonna you're getting ripped off. So what you can do is, is negotiate, you know, and say, oh, you know, uh, 200, you know, and they say, no, no, that's crazy. That's no way I would ever do that for 200. Well, then you just go ahead and keep riding around, burning gas, doing nothing with nobody in the back of your tuk-tuk, right? Go ahead, I don't care, and just walk to the next one. There's a thousand of them. But remember what I say, if you take one thing away from the video, Grab app. Open up your phone, get on Grab. It's super relaxed. Some nice college kid will pick you up, turn on some nice music, practice their English with you. A much better experience. The other things to watch out about Tuk Tuk's is they're gonna try, they're very entrepreneurial. So they're gonna try to take you to places that 
basically give them a kickback. Uh, in Phuket. All right, so they're gonna bring you to a place that gives you a kickback. In Phuket especially, they're gonna try to bring you to like a jewelry store. Oh my friend, oh, I have the place that has the most amazing deals on jewelry. Oh, you won't believe it. It's like, dude, do I look like I care about jewelry? This is like a, a $6 watch from, from Amazon, you know? Like, I don't care. No, no, your girlfriend's gonna love it. Your, your boyfriend's gonna love it. Uh, you know, you can turn around and sell it and make a lot of money, you know. <laughs> You're gonna get hosed. You're gonna get, what's gonna happen is if you go to a jewelry store, or even worse, if you go to a tea house, Basically, uh, I'll, I'll group all these together. A tea house, uh, if you go to a uh, karaoke bar, number one. Let me unlock my computer here, my notes. All right, go to a karaoke bar. These are all places where you'll come in, you'll see like a reasonably priced menu or, or services, and then all of a sudden when you go to check out, it's gonna be extremely expensive. Like, let's just take a karaoke bar. Maybe a beer is going to be $3, which is already a little expensive here. Maybe it's $3 and you're like, oh, it's a little expensive, but this is a nice place, you know. Well, when you're checking out, when they bring, you know, check bill, please, you know. When they bring you that bill, <clears throat> it's going to have, you know, those, those two girls sitting around you. Wow, they're charging you like uh, $50 an hour and there's three of them. Huh. And then, uh, oh, there was a, a charge for the ice. Wow, I can't believe ice is ten dollars, you know. Oh, and there's a charge for uh, the air conditioning. Wow, just like really like ten bucks just to sit in the air, and you're gonna say, you know what? I'm not paying this. Forget it. I'm not gonna pay this. And all of a sudden, the room is gonna fill up full of people that look really angry, and they're gonna crowd you, right? And you're gonna feel like if you don't pay it, you're gonna get your the tar beat out of you. And guess what? You might be right. Okay. Same with the jewelry stores. You look around, you know, people tell you, be nice, be nice, you know, come on, be nice. It's a really good deal. Just buy it, just buy it, just buy it. Okay? Just avoid it, all right? If you're in that situation, if you just somehow get tricked into it, you just weren't thinking or uh, just exit, oh man, my stomach's hurting, I gotta go. You know, maybe I'll come back later. It looks interesting, you know? Get out, okay? Don't, don't talk to anyone, don't feel bad. These people do not care about you. Okay? They don't care if you live or die, nothing. Just get out, okay? So if a tuk-tuk wants to bring you somewhere, don't go. Even, I, even in Laos, I had this happen where uh, a tuk-tuk, he's like, hey, do you guys have a hotel? I have the greatest hotel. He brought me to the most terrible hotel I've probably ever stayed at, and we paid basically top dollar for it, probably $50, when a nice hotel would have been 15, okay? So, don't don't go anywhere they recommend okay if the tuk-tuk recommends it don't go unless unless you ask them for a recommendation hey you know what can you tell me what where you might recommend maybe a couple places you might recommend oh yeah you know over here there's this you, you can always tell if they're not trying to sell it they don't really care if you take it or not that's a good sign okay all right so uh <clears throat> I also want to talk about um, if if you get yourself if you get yourself in so much trouble that you feel like the country is not safe for you. All right. Uh, basically, there there are a lot of options. Um, if you're going to fly anywhere in Southeast Asia, um, you can do so for usually a hundred dollars or less. You know, for like a, a straight flight. So. If I was gonna recommend somewhere to fly outside of Thailand, let, let, let's just say you had a visa problem, okay? Um, Lao is, it, there's no ocean there, it's kinda hot, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, you know, but it's safe, it's a little more expensive than Thailand. Uh, Lao is a good place to go. Um, not a lot of shopping there. Everything costs maybe 20, 30% more than Thailand. But Lao is a good place to go. If you're more adventurous, uh, another visa on arrival where they'll give you 30 days is Cambodia. Uh, but just keep in mind, if you got yourself in trouble in Thailand, the kind of trouble you can get in in Cambodia is exponentially worse. So 
if, if you were stupid in Thailand and felt scared, you might end up dead in Cambodia. Okay, so just keep in mind that 30 years ago, they killed off a third of their own population, right, for going to college. And uh, up until about five years ago, you can buy AK-47s and ammunition uh, for about maybe between 30 and $50. And you could buy it more easily than you can buy a Snickers bar. And that's not an exaggeration. That's something you can look up and check. It's only changed in the past five years, okay? However, you can still go there. Everything's possible in Cambodia, uh, which is why I recommend really staying in the lines there. You know, there's a beautiful beaches there. There's nice people. If, if you're if you're screwing up in Thailand, probably don't go there. Um, if you have money, if you have enough money for a three hundred dollar ticket, I recommend the Philippines. Okay, Philippines. They speak English. They're basically Americans that are Asian. You know, it's a great place. All right. Um, <clears throat> now I want to talk a little bit about money here. Um, be aware that the way money works here is uh, th Thailand doesn't tax heavily. There's not sales tax. There's not income tax. Really, there's there's not a lot of tax. But what they do is uh, the ATMs charge about seven dollars to withdraw any amount of money from a foreign bank. So they get you there, and they also get you a little bit on the conversion rate. So. Maybe the conversion rate should be 31 baht per, per US dollar. And maybe the ATM machine is going to give you 27. So keep in mind that whenever you do that or Western Union, which is actually not the American Western Union, we know it's a centralized Thailand version of Western Union. So it, it is Western Union, but Western Union had to basically hand the keys over to Thailand. Okay. Uh, so Thailand runs it and the American company gets a cut. Okay. But they basically really, like if you transfer $1,000, it's gonna cost you about $100 just from the conversion, and then another $30 for the Western Union fee, depending on how you do it. Like if uh, if you transfer from an ATM card, you know, and go to a cash pickup location. All right, so keep in mind that when you transfer money, that's a cost of, of living here, okay? It's expensive and it sucks. Um, are there ways to get around it? I, I have a friend that has a way. Uh, basically, if you have your own business here that has a credit card machine, you can theoretically run your own credit card here, and then you get a lot more competitive conversion rates and don't pay those fees. I've heard that that works well, but not everybody has a business here, okay? So just consider the ATMs and everything like a cost of doing business, all right? And <clears throat> this is uh, another thing. Um, <laughs> where to meet that special friend, all right? So you, you've somehow or another started talking to somebody, uh, you, you know, where do I meet that special Thai girl? My advice, go to church, the best way, okay? Go to church, go to a business meeting. I have a whole video about how to find a good Thai wife, all right? I talk about how bars is like the worst way. Okay, but I know that the majority of people watching this video are gonna meet a girl at a bar, okay? So, uh, or on Tinder, you know, or on, on some dating app. So, another thing to watch out for is where to meet people, all right? So, my recommendation, if you're gonna meet a girl for the first time, uh, go to Amazon Coffee, which is like the half price version of Starbucks. Um, meet at the mall they have a central big central mall in every major city invite her to go on a tour you know like a zoo go to a, a restaurant uh, you know they have a lot of good food apps i'm going to link one below for you all right so these are all the things i recommend and here's what i don't recommend all right what i don't recommend is uh, follow me to my house Okay, uh, you meet somebody, maybe you're walking on the street in Nana Plaza in Bangkok and you know, some really beautiful girl for some reason is really interested in us, right? And she says, uh, hey, you know, do, do you wanna get a drink with me? Follow me. And you walk down one dark alley, down the next, down the next, down the next. And before you know it, you realize, man, I could be in real trouble here, right? So, so don't do that. Meet in the light of day 
don't go to these dark places. Um, if some girl, you know, let's just say you're real stupid, you know, uh, most people who come here are, and they say, hey, meet me at my place, and it's some village, you have to drive down this dark road, and there's dogs chasing you, and dogs barking, and weird people, Thai guys looking at you strange, like, what the heck are you doing here, you know, and, and you have to, like, car climb under a fence, you know, to, to, to walk into her house. You, you know, a hotel here is, like, 15 bucks, right? Uh, a nice one. Right? You can you can really live it up for 30, right? Like I think the nicest hotel in this the city I'm at is 30 bucks. Um, is your life worth 15 bucks? You know, uh, I, I highly recommend, you know, if you're gonna be stupid, do it the smartest way possible, okay? So your life has more value than $15. Just remember that. Um, one thing my wife tells me all the time is, uh, your life has value if I get upset at somebody on the road or, 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 or whatnot. You know, your life has value. Treat it like that, okay? A lot of the people here, they don't know their life has value, okay? Um, the Buddhists have a thing about live today because we don't know if there's gonna be a tomorrow, right? That makes them a lot quicker to do something stupid to you, you know? That makes them a lot quicker to, to go for that money today and forget about what happens tomorrow. Okay, but you, you don't want to do that, okay, because eventually you're going to want to go home, eventually, you know, you're going to want to be breathing next week, okay? So, um, <clears throat> here, let's see here. I mentioned drugs, okay, don't do drugs here, you can be randomly tested, um, but if you're going to do something like, uh, it, you know, on the street, they saw a lot of like uh, sexual stimulants and things like that. Uh, they're not legal in Thailand, okay? Just so you know, a lot of stuff's legal here. You can go to the pharmacy and get pretty much everything. I use steroid cream for like uh, some heat rashes that I get real easy and they clear it up very fast. Um, <clears throat> I can get the big 600 milligram ibuprofen without a prescription. I can get everything without a prescription. But they sell those drugs on the street, like the Viagra knockoff, Cialis, whatever stuff you know they have right now. Um, number one thing, you don't know what you're buying. It's not legal here, okay? That means it's not regulated even by Thai standards. Okay, so you don't know what you're taking. Don't do it, okay? Number two, if you go to a pharmacy that's actually trustworthy that will sell it to you, they're actually having to risk their license to sell it to you. Is it worth it? You know, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't want to have someone lose their license over selling you something stupid, right? Um, so just keep that in mind. If you have it and you're caught with it, it's it's not a huge deal. Like if you're caught with marijuana or a real illicitly illegal drug, uh, but but it's a fine. You know, it might cost you 15 bucks and a lot of embarrassment. Just avoid it. Okay, stay away from it. Um, all right. And finally, last point is have, a, have an exit plan, all right? There, there's absolutely nothing sadder than a, a foreigner that comes here that, uh, you know, maybe they're, they're emotionally broken person that uh, they just really desperate for love and, and they were just so shocked when they went to the bar even though they're 70 years old. Uh, some 20 year old girl thinks they're super handsome and, but all of a sudden started having a lot of problems like you know her mom got sick and her kid needs tuition and the water buffalo at the farm need, needs to see the vet and she's always dreamed of having a house but could never afford it she doesn't really want to be at the bar but you know she has no choice and she has to take care of the little the little one and, her mom depends on her, right? And, and all these things, every everything that comes out of her mouth, you can just hear cha-ching, 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 cha-ching. You know, everything's a little withdrawal from you, right? Uh, you know, and, and nothing's going to where you think it is. But at the end of the day, all these little things add up to a lot. And you can find yourself broke, right? Maybe you're... Uh, you know, when you meet a girl at a bar, this is what happens. This is why, watch my video about how to find a Thai wife so this doesn't happen to you, okay? But basically, what you need is some sacred money, put it aside to, uh, to get the heck out, 
okay? So if things go bad for you, you couldn't handle it here, the freedoms were too much, uh, the girls were too much, the alcohol was too much, you, whatever. You just wanna get out of here and go home, go back to England, whatever. You have to have money set aside to do that, okay? There's a lot of, of foreigners here that can't afford to go home. They blew all their money here, right? And, and those same girls they help don't care about them anymore because their money's gone. Have sacred money put somewhere that no one touches, that no one has access to at all. So you have enough for a plane ticket, to, to get transportation to the city with the airport. Like Bangkok is basically where you have to go. Um, and you have enough for a couple days of hotel and some food for, for moving around. That's probably gonna mean, mean about 1000 to $1,200. Have it set aside, have an exit plan, okay? Now, I hope this video is helpful. There's a, just a ton of things I haven't been able to cover, but uh, in a nutshell, if someone's super friendly with you and wants to help you a lot and wants to know all of your business, just get away from the person, okay? Uh, now, if you're dating a girl for three days and she's asking you a lot of questions, you know, that's just normal, okay? But if a stranger walks up to you on the street and they have a lot of questions about what's going on, you know, where are you from? They try to make you comfortable. They, they try to relate to you. They want you to go somewhere with them. They want you to buy something. Don't do it. You know, I, I did a really stupid thing in China. I was in Shanghai and I was in the airport for like 30 minutes. And some Chinese dude's like, oh, he looks really stupid. And he was right. I, I think I was a lot stupider then. He came up to me, he's like, hey, I've got an iPhone, whatever, right? And, and he goes, I'll sell it to you really cheap. And he turned it on and he starts doing stuff with it. And I was like, wow, he wants to sell it for like $100? This is so crazy and it works. It feels wrong. Everything, every single part of my brain is telling me this is stupid, but what did I do? I had like a stack of money. I'm just, I'm about to go to Thailand. My trip hasn't even started. Gave him three or $100, right? He wanted like, uh, I don't know, 300 or 400, but I got him down to 100, I got him down. Oh my gosh, that guy, as soon as he got the money, walked off as fast as his legs would carry him. And uh, that phone was so useless, couldn't take a photo with it, couldn't take a, make a phone call. Even the headphones didn't work. I plugged them in, they shocked my ears, okay? Uh, one of my friends, I actually gave her the phone. I don't know what she did with it, maybe used it as a paperweight, okay? So don't buy something, don't go anywhere, don't tell people your business, don't tell people you're rich in your country, keep everything to yourself. In Thailand, we have a word called suak, okay? Suak is basically mind your own business, but it's 10 times harder than that. Uh, it's a fighting word here. People in Thailand, it's the normal thing here to keep to yourself. It's the normal thing to be private and polite. There's questions that are not polite. How much money do you have is not polite. They know that they're not being polite to you, okay? So just in your head, remember that word, suck. Oh, it feels good to say, but don't say it. Your, your girlfriend will slap you. Trust me, my wife would slap me if I said it, okay? That means none of your business, okay? So you don't have to tell everybody none of your business, but just, oh, you know, uh, yeah, I'm from America. I really like it here. Uh, so what do you do in America? Oh, I work on the internet. Yeah, yeah, but I love it here. I have a lot of freedom. I can kind of work from here too. It's great. Oh, well, that's cool. How much do you make doing that? You know, every month it kind of varies. You know, some months are really good. Some months are kind of bad. You know, this has been kind of a bad month. Really? Oh, that's cool. Do you have a business here? Do you do this? Oh, you know, I had a little business I sold a while ago. I've got a little shop right now, but you know, just play everything down or completely ignore it. I had a policeman when I was getting a haircut yesterday ask me a ton of questions. I was super polite. I smiled the whole time, told him he's handsome, and uh, I gave him no good, useful information, okay? So uh, I hope this video is helpful. Uh, this is all stuff you need to know. Uh, <clears throat> if you stay on the straight and narrow, stay in the light, you're gonna encounter some of these things anyway, and I hope this helps you. Uh, please take a moment to subscribe. Uh, you know, uh, I'm trying to build up my subscriber count a little bit, make these videos uh, worthwhile to do. They take a lot of time. But uh, thanks for forgiving the environment today. Uh, maybe it's been something new and interesting. Thank you so much, and I will see you next time.